Hey, what's up guys? It's your bad for you. I'm again back with a new video for the Rising. The Secrets of Gloomrot update is about to release and in the past days I spent a lot of time on a preview version to check out the most important key locations to get your hands on the new resources to basically craft the best weapons and armor in the game. So in today's video, we're going to check out the most important areas which you should visit to get your hands on the new resources, including the cave teleports, which you can access with your bed form to make all this a lot more efficient. Let's get right to it. All right, so here we are on the new Secrets of Gloomrot update. I quickly want to thank the team, Stunlock Studios, for inviting me to this V Rising preview to check out all the new content early. It's been a lot of fun to rediscover the game and I can't wait to share even more about it in the coming days. And yeah, if you're looking forward to explore the new update yourself as well, be sure to check out my link in the top right of the screen as well as description. If you want to host your own server, get a nice discount while you're at it and of course also support the channel. Cheers. All right, so here we are currently on a gear level of 84. So I'm about the maximum level right now. You can go a little bit higher with uh, high brood blood and possibly some more upgrades. But um, I also got my hands on one of those legendary weapons, which we talked about yesterday. I'm going to show you guys how to craft these in a bit. But uh, let's quickly open up the map. As many people have questions about what would be the most interesting place to build a base. It's important to know that once you're done with the Dunley farmlands, you can start progressing towards the Gloomrot and Curse Forest areas. And Silverlight Hills is also tied to this. So there is not one specific endgame zone. You basically have to farm resources in all three. But um, the first two you get access to are the Curse Forest and the Gloomrot South. As after you've taken down the highest level V-Blood boss in the Durnley farmlands, Octavian the Militia Captain, you will unlock the Dawthorn Regalia, which is the new armor you can start crafting with the resources from the Curse Roots this is pretty similar still compared to the previous version of the game. If we quickly check out the tailoring bench, you can see that for the Dalthorn Regalia, you're going to need pristine leather and silk. Silk can be made at the loom, for which you're going to need silkworms and cloth. Cloth is a resource which you can unlock in the Dunley farmlands and also farm in the Dawnbreak village, a little bit east of the Haunted Iron Mine. If you quickly want to farm a little bit of that, while well, it can also be made with a loom with the right resources. But um, of course, for the silkworms, you're going to have to travel to the Cursed Forest. So before you visit the Gloomrot south and north, you first want to make your way to the Cursed Forest. The Spider Cave, which is where you can find the silkworms as usual, while now it is in the west instead of the north. So um, get your hands on some silkworms, craft some silk, and then you can make the Dawnthorn gear. You could use Merciless Hollow Fang from the Dunley Farmlands, while Dawnthorn is going to be a lot better. Of course, if you don't find the blueprints for the Merciless Hollow Fang, you can always check out the Dunley Farmer's Market. Once again, made a video for it in the top right of the screen with all the information you need about these new merchants. But um, it's very central in the Dunley Farmlands, a perfect place to get your hands on all the books you need to progress to the next zones. Pretty interesting. Exploring the Cursed Forest has become a little bit more difficult with the Secrets of Gloomrot update. So you first want to take out the Old Wanderer as he gives you a blueprint to craft a cape which makes the wearer immune to Curse of the Forest. If you have this one equipped, you will not have extra HP or any resistances, but you won't have this curse which basically makes you blind when exploring. Inside the spider mine, you will find Angora, the spider queen, who also gives you access to silk recipe. So you're going to need this one to craft the Dawthorn Regalia. But once you've made your set of armor, you basically want to make your way to the Gloomrot South. As right here, we have two pretty interesting areas. The Pools of Rebirth, but also the Transcendent Machine Factory. In the Pools of Rebirth, you will find Angram the Purifier. He also gives you access to the Radium Alloy Blueprint. While if you go to the factory, you will find Ziva the Engineer. And if you take him down, he will give you access to the Empty Canisters, as well as the Fabricator, which is a very important new structure for your base, as this one unlocks a lot of new stuff. This one also needs a forge flooring, but if we check out the fabricator, you can see that we've been printing a lot of money. But um, this is where you can craft empty canisters for glass and iron ingots. You can use charge batteries and radium alloy for power cores. And last but not least, you can also make EMPs, which are bloodbound made with power cores and ingots. 
So on level 60, Ziva the Engineer and Angram the Purifier, most important two V-Blood bosses to tackle first, while you've probably already taken down Raziel the Shepherd in the Dunley Farmlands by that time. This one is very important to get your hands on the Essential Forge, with which you can craft the new Shattered legendary items. So if we quickly check out the bouquets right here, you can see that I collected a lot of these legendaries. And the cool thing is they all have unique stats. An Insatiable Penetrator and a Lord Commander's Dominator. This one has physical power, damage to creatures, spell crit chance, spell crit damage, as well as resource yield, while this one has physical damage to creatures, attack speed, physical strike chance, and spell life leech. So every single one of these can be unique. Sometimes you will find the exact same name, but they can still have entirely different stats. These are of course endgame legendaries, which you will primarily find when taking out high level V blood bosses, but let's say from the Dunley Farmlands, you can start finding the blue items, which are also very strong shattered weapons. For example, I have a Hatsman Decapitator right here, which I, I think found in the Dunley Farmlands. Physical damage to boot, weapon attack speed, physical resistance, and I think it comes with some pretty epic new abilities to use. So yeah, great swords are super cool to have. So let's quickly take out one of these legendary items put it in the essential forge to see what exactly you need to craft it. Sanguine pistols, three onyx tears and also primal blood essence. Primal blood essence can be made with the blood press as usual, while for of course sanguine weapons you want to visit the silver light hills as this is where you can unlock dark silver gear. So uh, for that you want to travel to the sacred silver mine. It's important that now you won't be able to enter it via the front gate. You basically have to use this path, walk all the way to the side basically, and this is where you can jump down into the mines. There are some pretty interesting new mobs right here, while if you've taken enough silver, you can basically just make your way to the south, and this is where you'll find a new V-Blood boss. Sir Magnus the Overseer, a level 66 V-Blood boss who also gives you access to dark silver ingots, so you can then start producing them at the furnace. This is gonna need 15 silver ore, but also three spectral dust. And for that, you once again want to make your way to the Cursed Forest. So in the Cursed Forest, this is where you can get your hands on a nice amount of these, as well as in the southeast. You can also make these at the grinder, but um, the Cursed Village in the center is the place where you want to go, as right here, you can fight another V-Blood boss, Cyril, the Cursed Smith, and this guy gives you access to the anvil. So that is where you can start making these dark silver weapons. Dark silver sword, axes, mace, spear, reaper, slashers, crossbow, great sword and pistols. If you've already, of course, taken down the V-Blood bosses who give you access to the new weapons. And last but not least, of course, you want to know how you can make these shattered legendary weapons, for which you're going to need a sanguine weapon, Onyx Tears and Primal Blood Essence. I think it's exactly the same for every single one of them. There you have it. And um, for that, of course, you want to have access to Sanguine Weapons. These can be unlocked via blueprints you find in Silverlight Hills and also the higher level V Blood bosses in the other endgame zones. But um, if you don't find a certain book or blueprint, I spent a lot of time searching for the axes. Well, you basically just want to make your way to the Brighthaven Trade District, as this is where you can now purchase the books, which you're going to need to upgrade the weapons. To upgrade your Dark Silver to Sanguine, you're also going to need Golden Ingots, which you can make with the Furnace, if you combine Sulfur and Gold Jewelry. If we quickly open up the map, I think once again, Brighthaven is a fantastic place to get your hands on Golden Jewelry. As you can see, you can primarily find them in the northern part of the area, especially Brighthaven Cathedral with all the boxes or chests it comes with. And yeah, the big boy inside the cathedral is also Azrael the Sunbringer, who gives you access to the golden ingots. So there you have it, all the most important V-Blood bosses to take out as quick as possible to make progression to the next zones easier, because those allow you to craft better weapons 
and armor. So this is the entire explored Secrets of Gloomrod updated map. Spent a lot of time to check out every single area this morning. So it would be very much appreciated if you can leave a like. It's pretty interesting to see that most people decided to settle in the center of the map. Also makes a lot of sense to be in the Dunley farmlands as it gives pretty easy access to the Cursed Forest, the Gloomrod area, as well as the Silverlight Hills, which you're all gonna need to get your hands on end game materials. After playing for quite some hours, I can say that you're not gonna need to be in the Cursed Forest that often anymore, only for repair materials for your armor. So I would say possibly the best zone to be at right now would be right in the middle of the Gloomrod South and Silverlight Hills, as I think it's basically a sweet spot, very close to this portal right here, while you will still have access to Iron in the mid game. Say you just arrived at the Dunley Farmlands from the Farbane Woods, you don't have to go to the Haunted Iron Mine, which is going to be an oversaturated place on bigger servers anyways. In the Northwest, you now have a smaller Iron Mine, which you can get access to pretty easily if you live in the Northwest of the Dunley. And this one also gives quick access to Silverlight Hills and Gloomrot, which are going to be the primary endgame zones to get your hands on most resources, especially to craft your best weapons. Anyways, you can also see that now in the Farbane Woods, we have four different cave entrances, which you can access via the endgame zones, via the Curse Forest, Gloomrot, Silverlight Hills, but also one in the Dunley Farmlands. So the very first one, which I came across, is the one in Dunley. This one can be found at the Cotton Farm. If you use it, you will travel to the Farbane Woods Wolf Den, which is pretty central on the map. It can be used to quickly visit the Shady Dealer Camp or just be central on the map. While the one from the Cursed Forest will travel all the way to the southwest of the Farbane Woods, from this cursed village to the Bandit Sulfur Quarry. This can be pretty interesting if you quickly want to get from the Cursed Forest to the Silverlight Hills, while the one from Gloomrot goes from this Gloomrot farm all the way to the center, more or less, to the Bandit Copper Mine. And then last but not least, the one from the Silverlight Hills travels from Solaris the Immaculate, Fortress of Light basically, all the way to the bottom right, to this Bear Cave. A little bit north of it, you can find another shard basically, so this can also be a pretty interesting interesting teleport. Let's center this a little bit more so you can make a screenshot if you want to, but it's pretty important that you won't be able to use the bad caves to travel back to the other zones once you are in the far bay woods. From my experience, if you use your frog form, you cannot jump on top of the walls, while if you use your bad form, you can't reach them either, as they're basically blocked with a roof. Anyways, very quick to the in-game map once again. In the Farbin Woods, this is where you want to go for the merchants. Shady Merchant Camp East, Shady Merchant Camp West. If we go to the Dunley Farmlands, it's going to be in the very center, a little bit above the Haunted Iron Mine. While for the Silverlight Hills, you want to make your way to the Bright Haven Trade District. There you go. If we zoom in even more, look at the pointer of my cursor. This house right here with a little entrance will have merchants. If you go to the south, this one will have. And right here, you will find two more in this bigger house. So all in the Brighthaven Trade District. So there you have it. Everything you need to know to get your hands on legendary weapons in V Rising. How you can set up quickly to be ready for the Gloomrot update. If you enjoyed watching this video, if you find it helpful, be sure to leave a like and of course share your thoughts in the comments down below about the new update. What are you most excited about? And of course, if you still missed some parts, be sure to check out my video in the top right of the screen in which I cover everything you need to know about the new update, in which we talk about the new mutant blood, the improvements made to horses. And as right now you can tame your very own spectral or vampire steed with plenty of cool new abilities. But yeah, there is just so much more to talk about, which we're going to cover in the coming days. Right now, though, it is 4am out. I want to thank you for watching. Have an awesome day. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.